welcome you all back to a yoga practice. I know that we're all going through some really trying times. Some times that maybe we're wishing we're already out of. It's even, um, it's just been a few weeks for some of us to be home, trying to stay home and contain and eradicate this virus by just staying away from one another. And some of us are already tired of that. It's, it's very different from the way we're used to living. And so I was praying this afternoon and asking God once again to give me the words to help me to know what it was he wanted me to say to you all or to just let me be the channel that he says to you all, whatever it is he wanted us to hear. And once again, I, I heard that or felt that still small voice that said time. Talk about time. And then I remembered Ecclesiastes 3. So I'll just read that very quickly. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. So, as we come to this practice tonight, you know, there's a time for even this. A time maybe for us to be away from one another. I've said all along that hopefully this is a time while we are away from each other that we're drawing closer to God and that we're recognizing who we are. Taking that time alone to just be still and think about what God is trying to tell you to do in your life. And maybe that's not even thinking about so far out. Maybe that's just thinking about today or tomorrow. But anyway, as we read from Scripture, there's a time for everything. So there's even a time for this. So, as we come to that quiet time tonight, Let's just try to let things be as they are. You know, how many of us try to fix things, try to change things, try to get out of things, to quickly move on? Maybe we need to experience things such as these. Maybe we need to experience being away from one another so that when we gather together again it will be so wonderful and so appreciated like we've never appreciated it before so come to that spot with appreciation for even this time come to this place where you can be still and quiet
Father, we thank you for this time that we have together. We know it's hard to thank you in times where we feel like we're suffering or we're having hardship, going through trials and tribulations. But we know that scripture reminds us that there's a time for everything. And we know that it also reminds us that we should be thankful for every time. There's always a season. There's always a meaning. There's always a chance to grow from every situation, from every time. So as we're in this time of uncertainty, and as we maybe are feeling discouraged and frustrated, maybe even scared, help us to remember, Lord, that your strong hands are on and over all of it. Help us to remember that you control time, that you have your hand on everything that happens in this world. So help us to remember not to worry, but instead to keep our mind on you, to keep our focus on you, to utilize this time to become closer to you and have a stronger relationship with you. Lord, be with those who are suffering with this virus tonight. Lord, be with those who are suffering anywhere and in any, for any reason tonight. Help them to feel your presence. Give them comfort and peace. And Lord, be with us tonight as we move through this practice. Help us to be safe with these bodies that you've given us. And help us to strengthen them, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So that we can get through this time. All these things we ask in your precious name. Amen. So we take a deep breath in. We raise the arms skyward. And we remember when we raise with arms that we're reaching with fingers. We're softening through shoulders. We relax our hips, our knees. They don't need to be tight or tense. Just because we stretch, we don't need to strain. As we go through this practice, we pay attention and we are very mindful of anything that doesn't feel good to our body. We move out of that quickly. As we keep the hips forward, we rotate to the right in our Ardhatmatsi Andrasana, our half spinal twist. Maybe even allowing that right knee to come up, making this twist a little bit deeper here up here, feeling this a little bit more in the back. Breathe. Coming back skyward. Same thing on the opposite side now, twisting to the left. Again, twisting. From the rib cage up, so keep those hips focused forward. Maybe draw that left knee in. Remember, this is your practice. As I said in the beginning, nothing should feel like pain or strain. So if we ever move into something that you don't like or that's not good for you, move out. This is your practice. So modify as needed. Now I'm going to take the left arm over and out reach over with the right. My bicep flows over my ear. I'm reaching as I feel that stretch down the oblique and I settle that right leg down again. Try not to let it creep up into that stretch here. And then the opposite side. Lift. Breathe. As we stretch here, we'll remember our Bible verse tonight, Ecclesiastes 3. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Now come back out here. Bring the arms behind you. Shoulder blades reach back behind you. Opening up through the heart here. Navel drawing back to the spine. 
Maybe dropping the chin here down to the chest, feeling that stretch down the back of the neck. seated cow and cat here opening up with our cow with our inhale bringing the arms forward rolling through the back with our cat with our exhale inhaling flip exhaling bend inhaling flip flip exhaling bend one last time inhale flip Exhale, bend. Nice. Now find a way to look like a table. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. So you're looking just like a table here. Remember, if you have issues with your wrists, you can always make a fist or you can come down on your forearms whenever you need to. So I want you to keep your back in a straight alignment here. And I want you to start to move in a circle as, as if you were inside a cylinder. So you're moving the whole trunk of the body in a circle here. So we're bending through the knees. When we come down, we're stretching through the chest. And when we come up, we contract through the core. So as you come up, draw that navel up into that spine. When you come down, push the chest towards the floor. So you want to feel a good stretch in the trunk of the body. Now move in the opposite direction. Lift, contract. Nice, keep your breath flowing. Remember the breath is an important part of the practice, so we don't ever wanna lose it. So this is obviously warming up the spine, getting our circulation really revved up so we're ready for our practice. Nice, one last time. Nice. And then set the sit bones back onto the heels. Walk the arms forward into your child's pose, Balasana. Walking the fingertips forward, planting the palms into the mat, opening the fingers wide. Remember your child's pose is a place that you honor the body. Remember, you can come here anytime you need to. You don't need to hear me say, come to child's pose. Take your left arm underneath your right and just settle down as little or as much as it feels good with that left arm stretching a little deeper down the back. If it feels good to you, maybe even raising that right arm skyward. And back. Left arm out now. Same thing on the opposite side now, the right arm scoops underneath the left. Again, settling down the body and the head as little or as much as it feels good to you to stretch through the back. Breathe. And back. Nice. Walk your hands back up. In keeping with our Bible verse and our theme tonight with time, I thought we'd take our time during this practice. So we're gonna take our time in postures. We're gonna hold postures a little bit longer. And that makes us really concentrate and focus on the body and how we feel. It also makes us really call in those muscles a little bit more as you're trying to hold a posture longer. Remember, take what you need, leave the rest behind. So here, I'm gonna bring my hands forward. I want to come forward and curl through the toes, push into the balls of the feet. Keep the knees bent. Press the buttocks back and down. Lengthen through your arms. Breathe. So I feel that back stretch. I'm pushing into the feet. Nice. Now lengthen all the way up. Uttanasana. Forward fold. Just as the posture states, forward fold. So you're folding forward, just like a folding table. You're folding the upper body and the lower body in two, hinging at the crease of the hips, allowing that upper body weight to really give the lower body a good stretch. So really just press the chest to the upper thigh. 
Uttanasana, forward fold. Lift the right heel, or excuse me, yeah, lift the right heel. Press into the left foot. Your core is tight. You're lengthening through the left leg, pressing the chest towards that upper thigh. Your head and neck are relaxed. Don't hold any tension there. Set the right heel down, now lift the left. Press and lengthen through the right leg. Feeling the tension there, but not in the head and neck. So again, as we move through, three, through these, take your time. Utilize that time. See how you feel. Think about the muscles you're using. Think about how you shift weight to balance. Now take your time as you slowly reverse your swan dive coming up. Drive the arms skyward, reaching the fingers, softening through shoulders. Feel the stretch in the trunk of the body. Now, I want you to keep the hips forward as you twist to the right, wrap the arms around you as if you were hugging the body. Draw the right shoulder back. You're starting to stretch these arms, get them good and warmed up. You want to stretch the head and neck a little more. Bring that chin down into the right collarbone. And release. Same thing on the opposite side. You should feel that stretch in the upper part of the right arm. Now we travel to the left. Keeping the hips forward, rotating to the left. Again, we're encouraging that left shoulder back to open up the left side of the chest. And be mindful of your core here. Keep your core tight. Draw that navel back to the spine. And release. Nice. Hands to heart center. Come to the top of your mat. Let's take our time as we move through this vinyasa flow. A deep breath in. Arms lift, exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, your hands to your shins, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, your hands back down. Inhale, your left foot and your right back into your downward facing dog, Ardha Mukha Shwanasana. Downward facing dog. Exhale, flow forward into a plank. Inhale and lift your king cobra. Exhale, draw back your plank. Inhale and lift the hips, press the heels, downward facing dog. Exhale, walking the feet to the hands. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, your slow reverse swan dive. Exhale, your hands to heart center. Stand here for a moment. Take your time. Close your eyes if you can. Find your mountain pose, letting the arms rest alongside the body, palms up. Take a few breaths. There is a time for everything. Find your way at the top of your mat. And have your feet about hip width apart. And then I want you to start to bend through your knees and settle into your squat as if you were sitting into a chair, pressing the buttocks back and down. I want you to take the top of your arms and rest them on the top of your legs. Again, as if you were sitting into a chair. So you're tilting through the pelvic area, your core is tight, you're pressing the buttocks down, the weight has shifted to your heels. 
so much that your toes feel a little lift up off the floor and you can wiggle them. And when you look down, you should be even able to see them. We want to keep that 90 degree angle. Very important that we don't put pressure on that kneecap. Now, you can stay here. Putting weight with the arms into the legs is going to be much easier. If you want a challenge, release the arms down, but try not to lean forward to do that. Keep the buttocks pressed down. Keep the back long. Keep the core tight. Relax through your head and neck. Breathe. Take your left foot behind your right. Then do both knees as you come up, push from the foot. So I want to be equally balanced on both feet. So I'm pressing against the ball of one foot and I'm pressing into the entire foot on the front. And I hold here for a few minutes, hands at heart center, and I start to notice tension. This is a good thing. You're building muscle. If you don't feel like you're challenging yourself as much as you should be or as much as you want, bend through your back knee. Just remember, the knee is the driver. So to come down, I'm not leaning forward. I'm driving the knee down, keeping those 90 degree angles. I never want to compromise a joint. Breathe. here, maybe you want to come into a flow. Start to drop the left arm down, lifting through the right, lengthen through that back leg, keep the front leg bent, bent, and press the chest towards it. When you come up, push from the foot, come back to where you were, bent. Take your time. Let's go there again. Coming to the side, Lengthening through the back leg, stretching through that hamstring, bending through the front knee, keeping that 90 degree. And lift. Now you're probably already noticing, because we're moving slow, because we're holding longer, we are having to use muscles a little more, we are having to balance a little more. Take your time. Lift. Once more. Lower slow. Take your time coming down. Lengthen through that back leg. Bend into the front. Breathe. Remember, push from the foot, not from the hand. Nice. Step forward. Uttakasana. Chair pose. And down. Pressing the buttocks back and down. Tight core. Long back. Holding here. Take the right foot now. Behind the left. Bend both knees. Tighten through the core. You're going to use it when you come up, especially when you release those hands and push from the foot. Coming up. Hands to heart center. So you've heard me say before, when you're using these big muscle groups, you're going to notice the heart rate come up, the, blood, the, the breath pattern is going to get more rapid. Metabolism is revving here. So if you're noticing all that, that's a good thing. If you're noticing a little quivering in the legs, that's a good thing. You're working. Just never to a point of pain or strain. Slowly come down. Ease the right arm down. Notice your core gets tight. Lift the left arm up. 
lengthen through the back leg. Keep the bend in the front knee. Keep the knee on top of the foot. Breathe. Notice the twist here. As I draw that left arm back, I feel the stretch in the back. I'm twisting through the core. Tension in the leg. Slowly come up, push from the foot. Bend through the knee. There's a time for everything. For everything. Think about the times that you have struggled in your life, that you wondered, were they ever gonna be over? And though they probably weren't the best of times, think of how much stronger you became by going through them. How you learned patience and perseverance. How your character was built. So let's think about these things as we go through this time. Lift back up. Ecclesiastes 3.1. There is a time for everything. Let's come once more. Slow and controlled. Push into that foot. Tighten through the core. Easing down. Hold. Lengthen through the back leg. Feel that leg stretch as you bend through the front. Chair pose. Now I want you to bring the arms behind you, press the buttocks back, lengthen through the back, then come up. Uttakasana, chair pose. Then come back. Tight core, contract as you fold over. Nice stretch through the trunk of the body as you lift. Breathe. Again, coming back. Tight core. Push the buttocks behind you. Keep your 90 degree. Lift up. Nice. Hands to heart center. Come on up. There's a time for everything. Time for everything. Come to the top of your mat. Consider a sun salutation. Sun salutation. Though today has not been very sunny, again, there's a time for everything. I have a friend that says it's liquid sunshine when it rains. Liquid sunshine. We need the rain as well as we need the sun. Take a deep breath in. Swan diving down, Uttanasana, forward fold. Hold here, enjoy your forward fold. Notice the weight of your body stretching the lower body. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Nice, now bring your hands to your shins and lengthen through your back. Notice how you're really using your core here to keep yourself up. Your back is long, you're pressing the crown of the head forward, you're pressing the buttocks away from you, you're pushing into the feet. Breathe. Feel the lengthening in the vertebra. Relaxing the head and neck. Release the arms down under the shoulders. Take the left knee into the chest. Extend the left leg behind you. Runner's lunge. Now again, push from your foot and lift the arms up and behind you. Hover if you can, if that's too much. Keep your hands on your legs or on the floor. Begin to flow. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. 
hover or reach the hands down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down. Notice you're shifting the weight. Notice the core taking over the more you hover. Lift. And hover. Breathe. If you can here, lengthen through your front leg and settle your left hand down beside your right foot. Move right into your revolve twist. Your right arm lifting. Twisting to the right here. Breathe. Settle. That right arm back down. Find your lunge. Step back with your right foot to marry your left. Downward facing dog. From your down dog, flow to your plank, half or full, knees down or knees up. Lift your king cobra. Ease back to your plank. Lift to your downward facing dog. Let's add on. Maybe lift your right leg. Ease down to your one-legged plank. Lift to your king cobra. Lift back to your one-legged plank. And back to your three-legged dog. Nice. Lower that right leg. Walk the dog. Bend one knee and then the other. Taking your time to stretch the legs out. Press one heel down and then the other. Breathe. Lift the heels as high up into the sky as you can. Coming on the balls of the feet. And then ease the heels down towards the floor. Whether you make it there or not, doesn't matter. Flow forward to your plank, lift to your king cobra. Draw back to your plank. Lift back to your downward facing dog. Now it's your left leg that climbs if you choose to come into this flow. Flow forward to your one-legged plank. Lift to your king cobra. Draw back. One-legged plank. And lift. Three-legged dog. Now bring that left knee in. And step it forward. Lift. And place. Finding your lunge. So remember, I can keep my hands down. I can stay in my lunge. I can bring them up to my leg and hold on there. So find the place that's best for you. Bring the arms skyward if you can. Draw them back. Hover. Push into the foot. Tighten through the core. Lengthen through the back. Begin to flow. Inhaling, lift. Exhaling, lower. Take your time. Inhaling, lift. Exhaling, hover. Inhaling, lift. Lengthen through that front leg. Settle the right hand now down to the left foot. Moving into that revolved twist, that twist to the left here. Turning the palm of the left hand to the outside of the room. Breathe. 
breathe. Remember here is where you can always utilize a block if you have one, or you can come up on the fingertips if it's too far down to have the whole hand on the mat. So modify as needed. There's a time for everything. Release. Left arm back down. Find in your lunge. Step forward. Uttanasana. Hold here for a moment. Ecclesiastes 3, 1. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Your slow reverse swan dive lifts you up. Your hands marry at heart center. Once again, take a few moments. Take a few moments here to enjoy your mountain pose. To notice your body. How do you feel? What's calling out to you? Is there a place of tension or tightness? Breathe through that area. Concentrate on that area and breathe. Bring the arms skyward. Swan dive down. Uttanasana. Bring your hands to your shins. Ardha Uttanasana. Press them back down. Take your right knee now into your chest. Extend the right leg behind you, your runner's lunge. Now from your runner's lunge here, I want you to step back with your left foot into your Adamukha Shwanasana, your downward facing dog. We're going to work the legs a little bit here. I want you to lift that right leg into your three-legged dog once again. And then I want you to bend through that knee and bring it forward if you can. As far forward as you can. Maybe all the way to the right elbow. Maybe towards it. Then come back to the sky. Three-legged dog. Now this time, I want you to bend through that leg and bring it to the opposite elbow. Crossing the body. Maybe halfway there, maybe all the way you choose. And back. Maybe going a step further. Bend through the knee and extend the leg out over to the left. Pushing into the hands, feeling the stretch in the back, feeling the weight in your hands. And lift. Nice. Marry your right foot to your left. Flow forward to your plank. Chaturanga down. Lift up. King Cobra. Or of course you can come into up dog. Curling through the toes. Working against the whole body weight. Drive the hips back up. Down dog. Stretch. Breathe. Really appreciate this posture. This is such a great posture, downward facing dog. It really stretches out the back. The resistance being felt in the core as we lift and press in different directions. So pressing through the heels, pressing into the hands, lifting through the hips, feeling that stretch and that tautness in the core, in the trunk of the body. The shoulders are soft, head and neck relaxed. Such a great posture, one of my favorites. Adamukha Shwanasana, downward facing dog. Now lift through the left leg, three-legged dog. Bring that left knee in. Now maybe this is where you stay in this flow. Maybe you can just bring the knee in, that's fine. You're contracting through the core, you're holding. Maybe you can drive it to that left elbow. Lift back. Three-legged dog. 
Press through the heel. Maybe this time you challenge, crossing the body. Come in, cross over. Come back. Stretch, reach with the toes, press into the heel. Maybe this time you come in and extend out, reaching that leg out to the front, pushing into the hands. Core is tight, you're getting a great stretch around the oblique, oblique up into the back. And then back up. Breathe. Settle the left foot down. Bend through the knees, push against the balls of the feet. Your puppy, a low down dog. Go ahead and glide forward into your plank. Lift into your king cobra. Draw back into your child's pose. That was a challenging sun salutation. So take time to stretch here in your child's pose. Remember, child's pose is a place that we honor the body. So take time to do that. If you feel like you need to stretch, you need to take a break, even for a moment, come into your child's pose. Nice. Glide back forward into your plank. Lift into your king cobra or your up dog. And then drive those hips skyward, downward facing dog. Step or hop forward to your Uttanasana. Forward fold your slow reverse swan dive. Lifts you up. And your hands marry at heart center. Now we've used those arms a lot tonight. Let's come back to that stretch that we completed in the beginning. Drive the arms skyward, keep the hips forward, twist. Wrap the arms around you. Maybe now, coming a little deeper into this now that you're warmer, such a great stretch of the upper arm. Remember here, the tendency is to push the abdomen out, to protrude through the abdomen. I want you to keep a nice long torso. So drive that navel back to the spine. Hug the body with the arms. Drawing that right shoulder back. Remember, you can bring the chin down into the chest. Such a great stretch of that upper arm. And release. Bring the arm skyward. Same thing on the opposite side now. Keeping the hips forward, twisting from the rib cage up. So very much like when we do our Artemisia Andrasana, we keep the hips forward so that we don't strain through that lumbar spine. You're twisting from the upper thoracic spine. Draw that navel in, draw that left shoulder back. Breathe. Arms back skyward and hands to heart center. So come to the top of your mat to practice balance. So take the left foot, pick it up off the floor. Now, as we know, picking up one foot, this is balance. So if this is where you need to stay right here, you're practicing balance. You don't need to prove yourself to anyone. You don't need to compete. And you know, maybe this time is for that. Maybe you're very competitive and maybe during a class of several people, like we usually assume, maybe it's very hard for you not to compete, not to try to be like those around you. So maybe this time alone will let you just be you, you know? 
and enjoy your body and what it does and what it can't do. So if I lift the knee here, I notice I tightened through the core. I tilted through the pelvic area. I caused stress in that right leg, but it's a good stress. We've talked about this just the other day. Stress is not a bad thing. The way we respond to it can be good or bad. So stress can be good. We are building strength and muscle in this leg by stressing it. The way we respond to it is what's important. So we knew to adapt quickly, to stay safe by keeping joint on top of joint, not leaning forward, not leaning to the side. And then we extend the leg out from us. Now maybe that's low, maybe keeping the toes to the floor. Maybe we can lift the leg up. Bend back through that knee and grab onto the outer portion of the knee if you can. Twisting once again. Bring that left arm back behind you. Notice your gluteus on the right, your outer thigh. All the muscles in the leg really working to keep you upright, keep you balanced. And back. Balance is a tricky thing, different from day to day. Now, put your left foot behind your right. Now, if you start to come into this and you have any problem with your knees or your hips, if you feel any twinge or strain or pain in any way, stop at that point. This is something that we've done in our classes um, for, gosh, probably a couple of years now. Something that um, the Cleveland Clinic was using to assess health. But again, if you start to come into this and this bothers you, stop. So what they were doing was having patients cross one leg behind the other and then slowly come down, keeping your joints stacked, so try to just come straight down, setting down onto the floor, but not using the hands like I just did. Now, the, the whole um, idea of this is to be able to come down like that and then be able to come right back up without rocking or using your hands. Some days I can do it really well, some days I can't. And that's okay, that's like a lot of things. We just talked about that with balance, right? Some days it's good, some days it's not. Let's cross that right leg or the opposite leg behind the other and try it again. Some sides are very um, much better, or very, are very uh, um, better at doing things than the other side. So maybe the first side you came right down and went right back up. Maybe this side won't be as easy, or maybe vice versa. So we come down, and then trying to come right back up without rocking, without using the hands. So not sure if they're still doing that, but Cleveland Clinic was utilizing that to assess good health. Again, my philosophy on that is that if you're doing anything to stay flexible, and to keep your muscles strong to be able to do that, then of course you're helping your health, you're optimizing your health. Um, but just thought that was kind of an interesting thing. We've been doing that for years. A lot of people love to do it. Some people don't at all. But just thought I would throw that in tonight's practice. Moving into the opposite side, we take the opposite leg now, your right leg, and you lift it up. Again, causing stress on the left, but we learn to shift, not to lean, stay upright, to use our core. So immediately you draw the navel back, you tilt through the pelvic area a bit, then we lift the knee. Now we're really tilting through the pelvic area, really using the core. You can do some great core work standing up. Now we extend the leg out. Now maybe you need to keep the foot low, Maybe you can lift it. The more you lift, the more you're going to notice that quad, the more you're going to notice how you're strengthening the leg. Bend that 
knee, flex that foot, lift it up. If you can, come into that twist, grab onto the outside of the leg, bring the right arm behind you. Breathe. And back. Nice. Under the top of your mat, we'll wind it down. Remembering our Bible verse, Ecclesiastes 3.1, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Bring the arms skyward. Swan diving down. Uttanasana. Forward fold. Bring your hands to your shins, Ardha Uttanasana. Really lengthen through the back here. Really tighten the core. Relax through the head and neck. And then ease the arms down. Set one knee down. And then the other. Now take your hands back behind you. Make sure they're right underneath your shoulders. We always want to stack joints one on top of the other. So again, if I have my hands way back out like this, when I start to put weight into them, I'm compromising those other joints. I can feel that, so I know right away. So we always want to stack the joints, one on top of the other, have a good distribution of weight. So as I push into my feet and lift the buttocks just a tad off the floor, it doesn't have to be much, I'm working against my body weight. There's little to no weight in my feet. They're very much on the floor, but the, no weight into them. The weight's in my hands, and I'm lengthening through the arms, and the more I lift the buttocks and push the hands down, but lift the body up, then I feel that great stretch in the biceps and the triceps. Weight bearing, we know how beneficial this is. We know that it's good to prevent that bone loss. It helps build bone. So now, if I lift through the buttocks and come to that reverse table, the more I lift the buttocks up and level out through the back, the more I can feel that stretch in the bicep and tricep. Such a great stretch. And really, you feel this or should everywhere. You're squeezing through the gluteus, you're tightening through the core, you feel the muscles in the back, the arms. Now start to slowly settle back down, but if you can help it, don't Put your buttocks on the ground, cover it. And if you really want to work, bend through your elbows. Draw them in, but bend through them. Now we're working those triceps over time. Come back again, lift, lengthen, lower, contract, bend. Lift, lengthen. Doesn't take long to feel the muscles in the back and the arms. Those triceps working for you. Contract. In. You can always challenge here. When you lift up, extend one leg. And lower. And the opposite. That's much more challenging. And back. No, nice. Now bend through those arms. Really make those triceps work. Push the buttocks towards the heels and slowly lower yourself down, finding yourself in bridge pose. Walking the heels up to the buttocks as close as you can get them. Bring the arms alongside the body. Remember, bridge pose is an inversion, and inversions we're very careful to keep the gaze to the ceiling because we never want to compromise that cervical spine. So I'm looking at the ceiling. I never want to turn my head from side to side. And I lift the buttocks up, pushing into the feet. And I create that tension in the gluteus and the quads. My core gets, it's stretching, but it's taut. And the navel is drawn down into the spine. I can take one shoulder and roll it under, and the other as well, and roll it under so that those shoulder blades reach towards one another, opening up the chest muscles. Setu Bandhasana, bridge pose. I can even lift my heels up off the floor. Bridge pose, such a great posture. 
a nice full extension of the spine here. And then I want to slowly lower down. I want to raise into my up the wall, one leg skyward and the other. All the while pressing that lower back into the mat. Flex through the feet at first, then point, then start to rotate through your ankles. One way several times and the other. Motion is lotion. Take time to move through your joints. Allow that synovial fluid to coat them. So I want to lower my left leg out to the left, but I want to keep that nice 90 degree angle. And the way I'm doing that is using my core. So I'm really tightening through the core, working against the body weight of my leg. If my leg gets tired and I, I can't work against that weight, I can cradle it in my left arm, but if you can, let it hover over the floor there. Push the sole of the foot out and the opposite one up. Now, as you shift to the opposite side, you're going to really use your core. So take your time, slowly shift. Try not to allow that leg to fall on the floor if you can help it. Tight core. Breathe. Feel that stretch in the right inner thigh. So slow and controlled. Again, opposite side, shifting slowly, keeping the core tight. Breathe. And the opposite. Nice. Now take that right leg, cross it over the left, and then ease into your twist. Coming over to the left, your gaze flows to the right. Your half spinal twist. Breathe. back up, up the wall pose. Now it's your left leg crossing over your right and you're slowly moving into your twist on the right as your gaze flows to the left. Breathe. Feel the spine breathe and open up. Take time to enjoy the stretch, the muscles, the breath. Lifting the legs back up. Bringing the knees down into the chest. Open the legs up. Bring your arms to the inside of the legs. Grab onto your shins, your ankles, or your big toe. Forming a 90 degree angle into happy baby or dead bug, just allowing yourself to rock back and forth. A very freeing posture, great for the pelvic area, great for the back, the inner thigh. A very natural posture, one that babies assume very often, that's why they call it happy baby. They know innately that this is very relaxing and good for their body. All right, now extend the legs out to a nice wide V stretch, if you can. Nice. Bending through the knees, pull them into the chest, give them a hug. Hopefully not your last hug today. And then extend one leg out and the other. Come to Shavasana, Yoga Nidra, deep relaxation, a time to rest. 
a time to settle, a time to be mindful, a time to just be. As you start to transition from your practice back into your daily routine, remember our Bible verse, Ecclesiastes 3.1. There is a time for everything. There is a time for everything. And everything is in God's time. It may not be your time. It may not be my time. And it might be hard to go through and hard to understand. But we live on the Word of God. And God tells us that He's always with us. And that He'll always provide us with everything we need. And He reminds us that there's a time for everything. So we take a breath. And we rely on Him. We stay focused on His presence. We stay focused on His Word. We stay faithful to His promise. Start to bring movement back into the body. Wiggle, turn, bend, lift. And then when you're ready, rotate onto one side or the other. Take a deep, slow breath in. And as you breathe out, push with the opposite arm and bring yourself up to that seated position. Bring your hands to heart center. We always end our practice with that simple salutation. Namaste. It simply means the light and life in me honors and respects the light and life in each of you. In our Christian life, we believe that light to be Jesus Christ. I hope you felt the warmth of his presence. I hope you're able to go out now and share that light that's within you with others. Share that light and share that message that there's a time for everything. There's a time everything. Namaste. Thank you for sharing this time with me. As always, I don't take that for granted. I'm very appreciative of all of you, and I miss you dearly during this time of social isolation. Um, but take advantage of this time. Take advantage of time where you can be still and be quiet more, where you can listen to what's going on inside the body. Maybe for a long time, God has been trying to get through and he couldn't because of all of those outside distractions. So maybe he'll utilize this time to get through. I hope
hope so. Take care. Be safe. Namaste.